Welcome to the Q&A. Me and Ollie are going to take you through the questions. <laughs> well, I'm not sure Ollie's going to be that interested, are you, sweetheart? Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, I've been back just over a week now from Vegas. Um, uh, initially I was very jet lagged and uh, uh, we then got the puppy a couple of days after I got back as well. So the puppy decided to howl his way through the first night in, in the house. Um, so that along with the jet lag meant I was in, incredibly tired going back to work uh, on the Tuesday. Uh, I then developed uh, a bit of man flu, you can probably hear it in my throat um, while I'm doing this. Um, but we're now on the Saturday of the week after. Uh, I'm feeling much better. Um, and uh, pretty much recovered, thankfully. Um, so I've got about 50 odd questions to get through um, in this Q&A, so I'll get through as many as I can. Um, any I, I don't read out, then I'll just uh, answer them directly onto YouTube. Um, but I'm still off the beer, for those of you that are interested. Um, so I'm now drinking um, uh, tea, but I'm drinking it out of my uh, favorite uh, Stardust mug, uh, just to keep the Vegas flavor. Um, so I'm 10 days into my 30 days uh, with no beer um, and so far all I've managed to do is get man flu so do I feel any better for it? Not at all. Um, anyway right on to the first question. This is from Ben Heath. He says um, when doing a solo trip do you find socialising hard or have a lack of conversation with people or do you just like your own company? Um, the answer to the question is I just like my own company. Um, uh, I lived on my own for a number of years between getting divorced and then um, being starting a new relationship with Suzanne, um, who I now live with. Um, but consequently, I, you know, I've always been comfortable doing my own thing. I'm an Aquarius, which I think is uh, synonymous with that. Um, although I must admit, I don't think I would go to uh, another holiday destination on my own. I can't ever imagine, for example, going to the Caribbean and spending a week on my own on the beach. I think I'd be bored stiff. Um, ultimately, I love Vegas. I love the gambling in Vegas. I love the drinking in Vegas. I like the atmosphere in Vegas. I like everything about it. I can completely get lost in the city and barely think about anything else other than the city, the gambling and the drinking for a week to 10 days without almost pausing for breath and then going back home. So it, it doesn't actually feel like I'm on my own. Um, I certainly don't search people out to talk to while I'm there. If I talk to them, it's because they're an interesting person to talk to, not because I'm desperate to talk to someone because I'm on my own, if that makes sense. Um, so yes, basically I'm happy in my own skin in answer to the question. Um, second question from Rob. Um, you seem to have much more luck downtown than the Strip. Um, was it just random or are the downtown machines much looser, do you think? Um, yes, the downtown machines are much looser. Uh, I think, broadly speaking, um, per denomination, the one cent machines pay out um, sort of mid to high um, 80 percent. Um, the 25 cent machines are sort of um, low 90 percent um, and the dollar machines are mid to high 90 percent. Um, and I think you can probably knock two or three percent off those figures if you're gambling on the strip as opposed to downtown or north las vegas which is where the best um slot uh, percentages are um so just statistically um you are better gambling downtown for sure and i think if you look at my vlogs over the last three years i've had better wins downtown than the strip um almost almost all the time um got a number of questions here from uh, mark allison uh What's your biggest slot win? Well, it was uh, $1,500 in 2007 in the Golden Nugget. Um, I was going back to the hotel room at about 2 o'clock in the morning. I didn't really play an awful lot of dollar slots in those days. It tended to be the odd $50 here and there. And I basically slammed $50 in a, um, a Blackjack 21 machine, which was basically like a top dollar, but you had like a 21 symbol um, instead of the top dollar symbol. And I it was a five times pay machine. Um, and I hit uh, a five times pay symbol, a red seven, and another five times pay symbol, which was 1500 bucks, which I was uh, uh, damn pleased about at the time. And I still have a photo of me uh, in front of the machine uh, in our spare room here. Um, do I feel like Vegas is getting more expensive? Uh, talking about rooms, alcohol, show tickets. Um, I don't think, uh, well, alcohol, I don't think it's really getting any, any more expensive. I mean, I've always drunk Budweiser anyway, um, and no, no difference at all. In fact, you can still get 
two dollar Budweiser's on the strip if you go to the Casino Royale. Show tickets, I think they've always been expensive if you're looking at um, front row seats for Celine Dion or whoever, you're looking at 300 bucks probably, and you were probably still looking at that 10, 15 years ago. Uh, rooms, um, they've probably gone up in price, but I think the comps are decent now. Um, I mean, this last 11 night trip, I got uh, Luxor completely free of charge. I got um, California for a hundred bucks for four nights in the end. Um, cause I got an additional night comp cause of the problems with the, uh, the drilling, if you remember. Um, and then for Bellagio for four nights, I got that for 400 bucks. So all in all 500 bucks for 11 nights and none of the rooms were bad. Um, decent, right? Um, I think, uh, in terms of his Vegas getting more expensive, the gambling is an interesting one because when I first started coming, it was all three wheel, three real, uh, 25 cent machines. Sort of wheel of fortune, that type of thing, um, and you were playing seventy five cents a press. The casino floor was vastly made up of twenty five cent machines. If you were playing penny slots, you were considered an ultra ultra low roller. Um, now you would have to pretty much search out the twenty five cent slot machines because everything's penny slots. Um, but even though you're you're going down a denomination, um, the average bet has ramped up drastically so your your max bet now obviously is anything up to sort of 10 bucks on these penny slots crazy um so that's that's changed and you know i, I still used to take 300 bucks out a night um in those days um but i used to sort of play sessions of 20 dollars. so you'd put 20 dollars in a, a wheel of fortune machine which was 80 credits um, and you'd play through the 80 credits if you won you won if you lost you got up and you moved on to the next machine um now you're almost getting to the point where you're playing through a hundred bucks before or near as damn it before you decide whether you're moving on or not if you're not careful i mean obviously if you get a bonus throughout that hundred it's not quite the same but um it, it's a di it's a different way of gambling and they've certainly quite cunningly changed their the, the amount that they're, they're clawing off the top by by reducing the number of 25 cent machines and increasing the number of penny slots so I think that's a massive change in terms of uh, Vegas uh, income for the casinos anyway. Um, do I think Vegas is changing for the better, Mark also asks. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm coming up 50 um, next year, uh, so I'm sort of in that age where I'm always going to say things were better way back. Um, <laughs> music, you know, <laughs> everything. Um, do I think it's changed for the better? Not really. Do I think it's changed for the worse? Not really. It's just it's basically just changing. Um, I'm happy to embrace any change that Vegas chooses to make, as long as there are still uh, destinations like downtown which fundamentally never change. Um, and if you can either go to the Strip and see the latest um, mega resort or the latest uh, remodel or the latest this that or the other, but if I can then retire to, you know, the Golden Nugget or the California or Plaza or wherever. Elko, um, and that's still there for me. I'll be a happy bunny. So overall, Vegas Vegas gives me the best um, of both worlds, and uh, I'm happy whatever it does as long as it carries on. Um, he says also, do I think I'm going to continue to go to Vegas even though the exchange rate is getting far worse since since Brexit? Um, the answer is yes. Um, Vegas for me is as much a holiday as it is a mental release from work. Um, one of the reasons I really enjoy going first week of January um, is because I haven't started anything new for the year work-wise. So to go there for a week or 10 days means I don't have to think about work at all for that time. Um, and it's a, so for, for me, that's a really great time to go. Um, I'm lucky enough to get a bonus every March, um, which basically pays for all of my holidays for the year. Um, so unless something drastic happened... I will always go to Vegas regardless of the exchange rate. Um, he also asks, have you ever thought about going to Atlantic City or the Gold Coast in Australia, or, um, even other states in America that now allow gambling? I have been to other states in, in America that allow gambling. Um, I visited uh, Graceland re um, in the last sort of few years and we went gambling there. Um, it always makes me laugh where you go to some of these places and uh, because of the laws there, these casinos have to be um, on water. So they sort of pipe water about that thick around the end the edge of the casino 
um, even though it's basically on land, but they try and make it look like it's on water to get around the laws. Um, and uh, yes, I've been, I've, I've, I've played in a few casinos actually. In fact, wherever I go in, in America, and I've, I've been to a, a lot of America, I will always search out a casino in America because I think they're such fun. Um, I would love to go to Atlantic City. Um, I almost went there about five years ago, uh, but in the end I plumped for Vegas again. Um, but I would love, love to go to Atlantic City and at some point I definitely will. Um, and I would love to go to Australia, um, but I don't want to do that until I retire. Um, so touch wood, I'm sort of thinking of retiring in about six years. So then I would like to take a month off and visit Australia properly, which I'm sure will probably end up going to a couple of casinos as well. Final question from uh, Mark. Um, have I ever gambled in Laughlin? Now, funny enough, um, I was going to go to Laughlin this time. Um, and I looked it up and I did some research of uh, uh, Laughlin and uh, I was going to stay at the Golden Nugget there, which I think is a lot smaller than the Golden Nugget downtown. Um, it's about 90 miles from um, Vegas, if you don't know. Um, and I was very close to booking a couple of nights there. Uh, but in the end, I didn't. But I am 99% sure the next time I go to Vegas solo, I will take a couple of nights out and do a, a trip to Laughlin for sure. So uh, yeah, watch your space, I will definitely be going. Okay, next uh, question. This is from the Railroader's Wife. Hello, the Railroader's Wife. Um, what hotel would be the best hotel you've ever stayed at on the Strip? Um, and which casino do you think is the best gambling wise? Well, on the strip, uh, the best casino gambling wise for me is definitely Cosmo. Um, I think the slots in there are great. I think the drink service in there is phenomenal. I think it's a very friendly place. It's got a good atmosphere, modern, great lounge bar with a decent act in there the last time I was there. Everything about it is just good. It sort of has an old Vegas feel, but very, very modern. Everything about it's great. Love it. Um, the best hotel I've ever stayed at on the strip uh, well, the best room I've ever stayed at was at Mirage. Um, we stayed at uh, one of their really, really nice suites on the top floor um, about 12 years ago, and it was an astronomical amount per night. Um, and we stayed there for three nights, um, and it was without question the best hotel room um, I've ever stayed at. So that would be the best one. In terms of hotel... I, I still think Bellagio. Um, I stayed in a corner suite at Bellagio a few years back, and um, that was a great room. I, I just think that's a really nice uh, resort there. Um, so that would probably be my, I say, nicest. It's, it's my own personal favourite, anyway. Um, this next question is from uh, Pippa Didoda. Um, Have you considered vlogging at other times, not just your trips to Vegas? I like your style of filmmaking, and it would be interesting. Um, well, I'm actually, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I'm not very um, experienced when it comes to vlogging. Uh, and I think I've probably only really found my style, as it were, over the last sort of 12 months. Um, I keep getting asked to do uh, vlogs in London, um, maybe uh, some of the casinos in London and, and, and central London. Um, I might do a vlog from central London in the spring, um, showing you sort of my favourite sites in the West End, sort of Soho and that type of place. Um, I'll include the casinos, etc. I think you'd be very, US friends, you'd be very, very disappointed in the, the UK casinos. They're shockingly bad. But anyway, <laughs> there seems to be um, an interest in them, so I will show you what they're like. Um, but you'll, have, once you've seen them, you'll realise why I bugger off to Vegas every six months. Um, but yes, anyway, if, if you'd be interested in me doing that, uh, a London vlog, I'm not saying it'll be lots of episodes, one or one episode probably, um, then let me know. And if there's enough of demand, I'm, I'm happy to do one. Um, so let me know. Okay, this is from Dawn uh, Tomaski. Um, can't wait for the puppy. Love the vlogs. I have a question. What will you do with the puppy when you go to Vegas? Um, well, the puppy will um, stay with my mother-in-law who lives about three miles up the road. Um, and if for any reason she wasn't around, then obviously we'd put him in the kennels. Um, more footage of the puppy will follow uh, this Q&A. Okay, next question from Nicholas Bavington. Hi, Nicholas. Um, 
I can't wait till your next trip. Do you get lonely going out to Vegas on your own? Well, I think I've already answered that, no. Um, he says, I I've thought about it myself, but my wife says it's a bit strange <laughs> and I would struggle to keep myself entertained. Um, you have been uh, going for 20 years. What would you say was the biggest change in Vegas over the last 20 years? Um, a bit strange. Yeah, so I, I don't see that, but um, I can understand why people maybe would. I'll tell you one thing I do do if you do end up going on your own. I, I do an itinerary. Um, I'm a bit OCD stroke anal about sort of planning trips etc so I literally have had an A4 sheet of paper with every day listed and what I was going to do on each day whether that was you know which casinos I wanted to visit in the evening because as, as you know I wanted to visit everyone while I was there um, what malls I wanted to shop in um, what day trips I wanted to make in the car when I was going to pick the car up when I was going to drop it back um, and I pretty much stuck to that itinerary and I think if you if you plan it enough and include enough day trips and sightseeing and everything else, you haven't got time to be bored. Um, so uh, if you're going to do it, Nicholas, I would. Um, that's the way I would go about it. Um, the biggest change in Vegas over the last 20 years, well, that would be two things. The first thing would be the, uh, the slot machines in terms of... Uh, the rise of the penny machine, if you like, as I mentioned earlier. But I suppose the biggest thing, full stop, would be the development of the strip. Because um, when I first started going you pretty much had to stay south strip because um above monte carlo other than caesars and mirage there was very little um and on the other side uh, above mgm really there was very little you didn't have um, planet hollywood as it is now there was the 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 um aladdin the original aladdin before the rebuilt aladdin that that was that was just about to be demolished when i first went um you didn't have a paris um, you had ballys, but you know it, it, it was it was all very very less uh, built up than it is now. Um, in fact, I, I stayed at uh, TI in two thousand and two um, when it was still you know the the old uh, Treasure Island with the pirate theme, um, and I always remember opposite uh, TI where uh, they've now got Palazzo and Venetian. Um, I used to go every morning. I used to. Um, toddle off uh, across the road to use the internet cafe and it was this battered old uh, small shack of a shop where you could sort of buy a, a newspaper and use the internet for an hour for a small fee and uh, when you think now you've got uh, those big uh, hotels in that spot it just proves how uh, the, the strip has developed over over the course of the last sort of 15 years or so so I, I think that would certainly be the main change, uh, which I'm sure everyone would say. Okay, next. Uh, Zoe Herbert asks, um, absolutely loved your vlogs as per usual, just wish they'd been longer. I can't make them any longer. <laughs> I'm always a bit worried if they go over half an hour, everyone will get bored anyway. Um, what's your favorite hotel you've stayed in? Uh, I Well, my, my favorite hotel is the Stardust. Uh, okay, I, I, I do, look at it through rose tinted spectacles now of course um it closed in 2006 um because they were going to start building the echelon place um it irritates me a bit that i could have had another 10 years of stardust because that, that sort of project was abandoned but um that was a fantastic little hotel stardust loved it up there um in terms of the ones that are still standing sorry bellagio i think uh love staying at lux uh, sorry yeah luxor again uh, this last trip I don't, you know, anywhere I stay in Vegas, I, I enjoy. But um, Stardust would be the one for me. Um, and Zoe says that she's with me in Love in the Bellagio. It's her dream to stay there, and she was lucky enough to get two comp nights, um, and she got a free, amazing uh, fountain view as well. Uh, yeah, great hotel, great hotel. Um, question from Louis or Lewis Aylman. Um, what type of free room offers do you generate with your slot strategy and bankroll? Um, and uh, do you have any tips or recommendations as to which casinos seem to be more generous with their comp, comp offers? Well, I only really use two comp cards um, in terms of actually using the offers for free rooms, and that is uh, M Life. Um, I'm a M Life Pearl um, level player, which is really it's only the second to lowest. Um, I'm about, I'm about 25,000 points away from gold, which is the next one up. Um, but even with that, you know, I've got f uh, three free nights at Luxor this last time um, with 100 um, 
dollars free play and 150 dollars resort credit which i thought was an incredible offer um i got um a couple of free nights at aria in august last time i've already got um a couple of free nights for aria anytime this year um i got uh the bellagio for 400 bucks for four nights that that includes the resort fee uh this last trip so i think m life i think for their their um offers are, are pretty reasonable to be honest the other um card i use which really obviously is is uh, either off strip or downtown is the b connected car which is the boyd properties um and i always get two night offers uh for the california main street etc downtown which suits me great um so those are the two I, I think both both cards are excellent i'm not really one for using um the total rewards the caesars one um, i've always had a problem signing into the account online and i've I tried to sort it out again this last trip and it just doesn't work. So uh, to be honest with you, I do prefer the M Life properties to the Caesars ones anyway. Um, so I'm happy just to stick with M Life. In terms of um, yeah, tips or recommendations as to which casinos seem to be more generous, well, those two, those are the only two I use. Okay, um, this is Paul, Paul Sandels. Um, just wondered how you feel the non-slot time. Um, yeah, again, I've had a few questions about my bankroll of 300 bucks a night and uh, how do I make it last? Well, I don't know. It, it sort of seems to. Of course, you get the odd night where you run through it in ultra quick time. And those are the nights where I tend to go back to the room and get some more out. Um, but more often than not, um, I mean, obviously, you can't gamble nonstop for eight hours without a bit of a break. Um, so what I tend to do, um, you know, I'm either at a bar drink, well, I'm drinking throughout the whole time anyway, but I'm either at a bar drinking or I'm catching a lounge act or, um, you know, walking through a hotel, looking at the sights and sounds of that particular hotel. Um, I never get bored of just being in Vegas and, you know, as, as, as boring as it sounds, wandering through a casino taking in the sights and sounds of that casino, maybe watch it. I love watching high limit slot players. So if I can perch myself with a beer, just having a bit of a break, watching someone hammer a hundred dollar a press slot machine for 20 minutes, I'm happy, you know. Uh, I just love being in Vegas. That, that's all I can say. And I, I, I never sit there and think, oh my God, you're, you, you know, I, I, I never think I'm bored at all. Um, so I'm either drinking, I'm either gambling, uh, I watch a band, um, certainly if I'm downtown I'll watch the, the, the bands on Fremont Street, um, I'll sit at a bar, I'll, I don't know, I, the, 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 seriously the evenings just zip by, so um, during the day of course I have, I have, it's more of a structure during the day, as I said I have the itinerary, um, but again even if I've seen certain sites like the Mirage Volcano, I still have incredible enjoyment seeing it again. Same with the fountains. Um, I loved visiting the south end of the strip this last time. I hadn't been, I hadn't stayed down there for probably seven or eight years. So just walking around that vicinity, walking around those casinos, I loved it. Um, yeah, it's odd. I don't know. I think some people would would say, "Well, you've done it so many times. How can it still be interesting?" Well, sorry, but to me, it is. It's as simple as that. That's all I can say. Um, next question. Okay, another another one. This is from the No Frills Girl. Hello, the No Frills Girl. There's no picture for the No Frills Girl. Um, just wondering, when I'm sitting at the slots, I always find the people beside me trying to make conversation with me while whilst I'm playing. Do you ever have that happen whilst trying to do your vlogs? If I was sitting beside you or by you, I'd be asking what you're doing. <laughs> Hope you have a safe, safe flight home. Um, no, I don't. No one ever says anything. Um, but then you do see quite a few people um, sitting at slot machines with, with their phones these days. I don't think it's it's not such an odd phenomenon as it once was, to be honest with you. But um, of course, you know, you do get chatting to people playing next to you, particularly if they've got a bonus or you've got a good bonus and that they look on. So it is it is an interactive thing, and you do get chatting to various people. Um, obviously, in the, my trip in August, I, I got chatting to the lady with the dog in her bag, which um, I loved anyway. But um, So yes, you do meet interesting people uh, on your journey, that's for sure. Okay, next question from Anthony Smith. He says, uh, hey, awesome series. This year I'm in the planning stages of staying at the Mirage in June. 
can you tell me your experience of that resort? Um, yeah, that I mean, I've always loved the Mirage. Um, I love the casino there. Um, I say my, my favourite room I've stayed at in Vegas was a Mirage Suite. Um, I like the bar, the sports bar there. They they do the bit. The, they're really large. Uh, um, they do Stella Artois in really large um, beer form there, which is enough to enough to get me in for the night. That is for sure. Um, so yeah, so I, I don't think you can go wrong with Mirage. Basically, I think it's uh, uh, a really quality hotel, and I'm sure you'll enjoy staying there. Um, also, what other Vegas vlogs, daily or semi-daily, can you recommend watching on YouTube? Um, I love Vegas, and I would watch as many as I can. I watch the Trooper. Um, but that is mainly poker and he's into slots um, still watch him as he has wonderful uh, shots of Vegas as well as entertaining um, yeah I mean I think the troop is great and I don't play poker and I have no real interest in poker um, I love his his Vegas uh, landscapes that he he's very clever with the camera and uh, uh, he's also quite a funny guy as well. So, uh, yeah, if, you, if, if any of you out there have not watched The Trooper, it's Trooper 97, I think, or something like that. He does a, a daily um, Vegas vlog. Um, he does swear a bit, but a very, very funny guy um, and well worth a watch. I don't watch it every day, but a couple of times a week, he's uh, he's very entertaining. Um, in terms of slot, slot um, channels, there are two that I watch religiously, and that is Diana Rivoni um, and uh, Brian Christopher. Um, now, both of they, these people, they, they post daily. Um, they're in Vegas all the time. Um, God knows how much it must cost them to keep these channels going because uh, the only thing I would, my only criticism with these sort of channels is um, they, don't, they don't give you any conte context in terms of what they're winning against what they're putting in. So, you, you know, they must be losing heavily to get some of the bonuses that they're, they're showing. You know, hand pays coming out of their ears, to be honest with you. Um, and I just think it, it does give the wrong impression of how uh, s slots are. It makes it look like you know you're you, you know you're putting the money in and you get regular bonuses all the time, and it just isn't like that. As anyone who's played slots will know. Um, so I do think they could give a bit of context, but ultimately, you know, those channels are just there to show particular games. And I think if you're if you're trying to research games ahead of a trip, it, it, it's a great outlet to do that. Um, and both Diana and uh, Brian are, are, you know, are, are very amiable people and I enjoy watching both of those channels. So it would be those two that I would recommend for sure. Okay, next. Uh, this is KK Play Rush. Um, for a slot newbie, what machines do you recommend playing? Well, uh, you can play whatever machines you like. Um, all I would say is in terms of the strategy on the machine, I would tend to bet maximum lines and minimum bet to start with, probably on a penny machine. So you, you tend to have two banks of buttons. You'll have the, the top bank, which is the number of lines you want to play. So I'd always hit the maximum, which is normally somewhere in the region of 20. And then you'll have the number of bets per line. So hit one or two. So you're, you're, you're playing the maximum line so that you don't miss out on any, um, any payouts. Um, but you may not get as much of a payout because you're betting a minimum amount per line, but at least you're betting maximum line. So that's what I would do. Uh, I would stay clear of um, probably slots that aren't franchised, so things like Game of Thrones, etc. Um, just tend to stick to those that don't have huge um, progressive jackpots. Um, that way you'll get probably smaller payouts, but more regular uh, and just feel feel your way into it, and once you've got the hang of it, then decide whether you want to up your bet uh, per line or you know move on to different machines or different denominations. But uh, that would be my uh, um, initial sort of thoughts in terms of um, strategy for a, a slot newbie. Okay, uh, this is uh, PJ Slots. Paul says, uh, I think you should move to Vegas and become a daily vlogger. Well, yeah, I'd be quite happy to do that if I had the bank well. <laughs> okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, this is from Melanie Burlston. Um, she says, hi, Matt. I wondered if you gamble in the UK or just wait for Vegas trips. Um, no, I don't gamble in the UK. I might visit a, a UK casino once or twice a year. So, you know, I'll have a hundred dollars, um, hundred pounds or so. Um, but no, I, I tend to save everything for Vegas. Um, when I do gamble in UK casinos, I don't enjoy it even, even uh, less than 10%. I mean, I just don't enjoy it at all. It's not even comparable. 
um, and uh, I never really win anything either. Um, so no, I don't enjoy it. Okay, um, one further question from the railroader's wife. Um, do you have the My Vegas app on your phone or device? They say you can rack up points on the app by playing and then cashing the app coins in for real stuff at the casino, like food, drinks, room stays, etc. Yes, I mean I used to I used to play uh, the My Vegas app, uh, and I know it's very popular. Um, to be honest with you, I've got sort of a little bit bored with it. Um, I did get a few free buffets and what have you for my August trip with Suzanne. Um, but I haven't played it since I came back in August and I didn't play it prior to this trip in January. Um, but I, you know, it's probably worth doing if you can be bothered. I just think eventually you just get a bit bored with playing it every day. Um, and so no, I haven't is the answer to that question. Okay. Next, uh, question from Tracy 26. Um, should you always do max bet on the slots? Um, also, give me a list of your best slots to play and I will update you when I return from her trip um, of the outcome. Um, do I always do max bet on the slots? No, not always. Um, I did on this last trip. Um, and, you know, as a result, I did get quite a lot of reasonable hits, sort of $400 plus. Pretty much every day I was getting a $400 plus win in the early stages of the trip before I hit my bad run. Um, so as I was doing that, I sort of carried on on, I wasn't planning on doing solely max bet, but I ended up pretty much doing it on 90% of the machines. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed that strategy. Um, and ideally would probably do it again in the future. I don't necessarily think it spoils the enjoyment if you're doing it a bit less. Um, so no, I don't always do it, but I did do it on this last trip really. Um, and I'm probably look to next trip, hopefully. Um, um, best slots to play, well, I mean, I think I said it all in, in the videos, really, but um, Buffalo Gold, I, I never tire of uh, Wheel of Fortune, I would never tire of Top Dollar, um, I, I, I do like The Walking Dead 2, I quite like that new um, Willy Wonka machine with the wraparound screens, I'd, I'd give that a go, um, yeah, that's probably it. Um, yeah, I can't think, none, others, none, others, none of the others really sort of stick in my mind right now so I'd, I'd give those a go and bizarrely I, I've got a lot of questions about what I do for a living I'm not really sure what relevance that has to Las Vegas but um, so this one's from Tom Noble um, I'm basically a senior audit manager for a French bank in the UK um, and uh, actually it, it does have a relevance to Vegas because I think it uh, it sort of underpins my the, my sort of attitude to money and uh, the fact that I'm quite um, strict when it comes to gambling in terms of what I will and won't do in terms of how much I'm prepared to wager, what denomination machines I'm prepared to go on. Um, I basically look after all of the retail banking for this French bank in the UK, which means I travel around the country quite a lot. Um, and you know, a lot of people will say to me, you know, have a go at high limit, uh, you know, have a go on $100 a spin, uh, all of that sort of thing. I just wouldn't feel comfortable doing it. Um, I'm happy gambling at the level I'm gambling at. And I say it, do, it does come from having quite a sensible attitude to money, um, having worked in financial services since I was a teenager. You know, I, I, I see where um, being irresponsible with money gets you. Um, and I used to work in a, a financial institution that was just down the road from a casino. And we used to get... Um, guys coming in on a Monday morning uh, who had basically got their paycheck on the Friday, gone down to the casino and lost it all and we were looking to take out a short-term loan um, so that they could go back to their wife with their paycheck um, as a result of a loan rather than the actual paycheck. Um, and it, you know, it teaches you a lot of stuff and you know all these hand pays are great and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's all good fun to have. But if you're getting a hand pay but losing three grand in the process, what's the point? Um, I'd rather just gamble within a certain limit with the hope of getting a hand pay rather than driving the hand pay with the volume of um, betting I'm doing, if you see what I mean. Anyway, that's, that's, that's a, it's, a, it's a long old uh, story with the, with, with the gambling in terms of... I, would, I, would, I just stick to what I'm happy with um, and um, 
I will, I will gamble somewhere between $2 and $4 a press. Uh, I'm happy with that and I can't really see it changing. Will I, will I go to $5, $10 machines? Probably not. Um, maybe have a go in the future, but it certainly won't be a regular thing. Okay, uh, next question is Ryan Garati. I think I've pronounced that right, Ryan, have I? It's G E R A G H T Y. Um, how do I occupy myself when I'm having a rough patch? Uh, Ryan sets a daily budget similar to me, but if the gambling isn't going well, he sometimes grabs extra, extra cash with it within reason, of course. What I do, as I said, I, I, I'd sometimes go back to the room and take an extra 300 if it's gone very, very quickly. Um, Particularly during the daytime in off seasons when I can't kill time at the pool. If I'm downtown, I take in the free entertainment. So do I. Um, but in the strip area, aimlessly walking around gets old when you've been there so often. Um, although I'm a bit away from 33 trips. Um, well, I say that's the one thing with me. I, it doesn't get old for me. I, um, I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, I literally just take... I, I'm wide-eyed every time I'm in Vegas. And it doesn't matter how many times I've seen a sight there. I never get bored of it. So... Uh, no, but, uh, you know, in terms of downtime, as I said, lounge shows, uh, bands, bars, drinking. I quite like watching slot players, um, particularly high limit slot players. Uh, I love seeing the sights. Never get bored of that. That's what I do. Um, you seem to have the same beer tastes as me. Any good recommendations at Main Street Station for something a bud drinker would like? I'm not a huge micro brew guy. Um, yes, actually, uh, Main Street Station, there is one... Now, what's the name of it? Um, it's either Triple... I know, I know it's the Triple Seven um, is, is the name of the the, uh, the micro brew itself, but there is a, there, there's a, a, a brew with seven, a red seven in the title. Um, it's either red sevens or triple sevens or something. But that is the one to have. Really, really nice. I thoroughly recommend it. So get yourself down Main Street and have a few of them. Uh, and his third question is, on your solo trips, are there any decent restaurants you like that are in between uh, the chains and the fancy restaurants? I don't do high-end by myself, but stuff like Hash House, Pizza Rock and Hotel 24-Hour Places have been done to death by me. Um, yeah, I mean, I think... I think uh, the one thing I don't like doing when I'm on solo trips is eating in restaurants on my own. I just hate it. I don't know why. I just uh, I just don't enjoy it. And to me, it would be a waste of time doing it. I'd rather save money um, for that type of thing for a trip with Suzanne later in the year. So I do tend to stick to you know fast food, unfortunately. So I can't really help you with that. Um, I, you know, I thoroughly did enjoy um, In-N-Out Burger when I was there uh, this time. Um, so it'd be places like that and, you know, Hard Rock Cafe, Planet Hollywood. Those are the sort of places I would be TGIs. Um, those are the sort of places I would be happy uh, sitting down on my own in. But, um, I mean, you know, they're nothing to write home about or nothing, uh, particularly out of the ordinary. Okay. Uh, this next question is by Liana Ellis. Uh, she says, uh, what's your favorite non gambling activity in Las Vegas? Um, just seeing the sights and being there, as, as as boring as it sounds, to someone who's been there for so uh, so many times, that that's what I like doing. Um, in the summer, of course, I do like the pools. I like uh, the sun. As, again, as funny as that sounds, because we don't get that much of it in the UK. Um, so yeah, just just taking in the sights of Vegas. I, you know, I like shopping as well. Um, I do do uh, funny enough, someone asked me during the day in terms of shopping um i've I do like buying blu rays d v d s vinyl records that's my big uh sort of hobby back at home and rather than uh get things sort of shipped in and play customs charges i do do an awful lot of shopping for that type of thing while I'm in Vegas. I know all of the second hand record shops and blu ray shops and all that type of thing, so I can while away quite a few days doing that type of stuff as well um but uh, yes, but whilst I'm in Vegas, I just love. Love just wandering around Vegas and taking it all in. That's really it. Okay, next question. What was your best place to eat, says Jay Martin. Well, uh, as I said, solo, there isn't really one. In terms of um, on a trip on trips with Suzanne, I love eating. It's probably three main places I would recommend. The first one is the Top of the World at Stratosphere. Um, the second one is uh, Olives at Bellagio. And the third one is the Eiffel Tower restaurant. I love it there. Um, 
those are the three that I've consistently gone back to over the last 20 years. So yeah, I'd recommend those. And the next one uh, is uh, Valerie Kay uh, from Canada. She asks, um, enjoy watching your vlogs. You put them together very well. I was wondering what type of app you use to edit your videos. Um, I have a new phone and want to try the next time we're in Vegas to video some slot play bonuses, etc. Okay, well, I always used to be um, a iPhone user and I cashed that in and went for uh, the Galaxy S7 Edge um, in the summer. Uh, and so this last trip and the one before were on the S7 Edge, which I, I actually think are better quality than anything the iPhone ever delivered. Um, so I use solely the phone and it's the Power Director app. Um, and I have to say, I've been absolutely delighted with it. You do everything on the phone. You basically add all of the clips that you've uh, recorded. Um, you can sort of fade in and out or do various um, uh, things with, with sort of splicing of together the two clips. Um, and you can sort of shorten the edges, edit them together, um, add uh, music or whatever you want to do, uh, graphics, etc. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Power Director app, I think is brilliant. Once you get the hang of it, it pretty much edits itself. I can um, After a night out, it, it, it adds it all together. You can fiddle around with the order of what you want to do. You can then sort of add an introduction or a conclusion or whatever you want to do. Um, then literally by the time you've added the titles and what have you, that's very quick. Um, and uploading probably takes about 20-25 minutes, uh, which I tend to do while I'm asleep. Um, so that doesn't eat into my time either. So uh, yes, I thoroughly recommend it. Power Director app for the uh, Android phones. I imagine you can probably get it for iPhone. When I was using an iPhone, I used the YouTube Capture app, which isn't... If you look at some of my old vlogs, it's not as good quality as the Power Director one is. Okay, we're getting towards the end now. Uh, do I play any table games or is it strictly slots? Ask Chris Gill. Uh, strictly slots. Uh, sometimes I do play roulette, but I haven't done for a little while. Um, but no, I'm not as into table games. I think, to be honest with you, I think that's because I enjoy just, I like the drinking aspect and I do tend to drink a fair bit when I'm gambling. And therefore, you can't really concentrate too much. I don't need anything too taxing. <laughs> um, so yeah, it slots all the way. And then he also asked, do I play at any of the local casinos where I live? No, I don't. Okay, and this is from JD88. Uh, which game stroke machine new to you or one you've already played on did you find you enjoyed most playing on this trip? Um, well, JD, I think it was pretty obvious it was the Buffalo Gold, uh, not Buffalo Grand. Uh, so um, if you're going... Uh, Definitely, definitely uh, try that one. Um, it was, I think, again, consistently. I think you find, it's, it's quite odd, actually. Every single trip, you find a machine that consistently delivers. Um, like, you know, a couple of trips back, it was the Wonder Woman slot seemed to consistently deliver. Now I can't hit a thing on it. Um, Buffalo Gold, this one, this time, seems seemed to consistently deliver. Um but I would say maybe when I go back, maybe it won't be as good. I do think they, they fiddle around with the, the the payback percentages on some of these machines so that maybe the first year they're great and then the second year you go back, they're not quite as good. Um, but anyway, Buffalo Gold it is. And I've got... Um, Danny Adams says he wanted to second my opinion of... Uh, my recent post about Louis Theroux, um, the man's a genius when it comes to documentaries from the perspective um, of a Brit. Uh, yes, he is. And uh, if anyone didn't watch that Louis Theroux documentary, I watched it again, funnily enough, when I got when I got back. Um, and it was just as entertaining as it was the first time round. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, called Gambling in Las Vegas, Louis Theroux. Um, definitely look it out. Um, Bub3210 asks, do I have any lucky charms or superstitions when it comes to slots? 
Um, he says he feels like if the volume isn't all the way up, it doesn't pay. <laughs> well, actually, yes. I mean, funny enough, that's probably in the back of my mind. I, I do, I do like the volume up, just really for the overall uh, sort of uh, sound and vision experience. That's not really a, a superstition, but I do have a superstition um, in that when I get a bonus, you're, if you notice, I tend to tap the spin button three times. Uh, I think, as I mentioned on my previous set of videos, my lucky number is three. So, yes, you'll see me go one, two, three on the uh, on the spin button for all bonuses. And I tell you what, when it, anyone who's been to Vegas a lot of the times, when you see some of the things people do from sort of you know, st uh, st stroking the screen to you know, like doing this to the screen or I mean, they do all sorts of things and they will do it all night long. Um, I mean, it is, you know quite staggering what people will honestly think actually changes what is a random computer generated number um but yes um so that's that that's my only superstition okay steve b asks um he just wanted any advice on the best time to go booking flights hotels getting any extras freebies coupons etc so as to get there as cheaply as possible to free up money for a gamble um well, I think the best time to go, um, I would say, is either late in the year or early in the year. I got this flight very cheaply. Um, I went premium economy, and I think one of the way one either going or coming back was like three hundred quid. Um, I think overall it was about twelve or thirteen hundred um, for premium economy, which is pretty good. Um, in terms of, I'm not really, I'm not really into coupons and things like that, so I, I can't really. Give you any tips on that um i don't I, I think if you if you if you shop around for the hotels shop around for the flights you can eat quite cheaply in vegas anyway it's all really down it's all really down to whether you gamble or not as to how expensive the trip is in my opinion i think it's actually a relatively cheap city to stay in if you exclude the gambling <laughs> which many people of course don't um, question from Gavin Huang. Hello, Gavin. Um, he's a regular poster on my videos, and I do appreciate it, appreciate it Gavin. He says, um, when is my next visit to Vegas? Well, I'm hoping it's going to be uh, August again. Um, and have I ever thought about living in Vegas? Oh, no. I, d I couldn't live in Vegas. Uh, the temptation for the slots would just be, just be too much. Um, yeah, and I think, it, yeah, no, I couldn't live in Vegas, no. I do, I do, one thing I do do actually, um, when I'm getting cabs around town, um, one of the questions I always ask the, uh, the cabbies is whether they gamble. Um, and more often than not, they say they do. And they always have a story about either themselves who've got into trouble with gambling or a friend, a friend who's got into trouble with gambling. Um, it must be incredibly difficult to live in Vegas if you enjoy gambling or maybe if you don't enjoy it, but you can't help but do it. Um, no. Uh, I wouldn't want to live in Vegas and not gamble, therefore I couldn't live in Vegas. U University of Turmoil, what a fantastic uh, YouTube name that is. Um, how did I find things with the f poor exchange rate? Um, did I have to cut back anywhere? <clears throat> um, no, I didn't. As I said, I get um, a bonus at work. It pays for my trips. Um, I think this... I probably, I don't know, it probably cost me another thousand pounds, roughly speaking, to go this time compared to pre-Brexit. Um, but I just sucked it up and uh, no, they're very important to me, these trips, and I wouldn't let the exchange rate spoil it. Okay, Karen X says, um, can I just ask why so many hotel changes? Is it just maximising comps? It seems like too much effort. Looking forward to the puppy updates. Take care. Um, no, no. I mean, I, um, I would normally do... I'd always normally split um, a trip uh, to, between the Strip and downtown for obvious reasons. Um, but this time I decided to do three hotels. I don't, I don't, I don't find it as a chore um, because I enjoy staying at different locations and also it allows me to explore within the vicinity of where I'm staying different areas of the city. Um, so no, I don't find it a chore and I actually enjoy, um, hopping around from hotel to hotel. Um, again, I think if I was with Suzanne, I'd limit it to two hotels in a, in a trip. Um, solo, I'm happy to do three. If it, if it's over a week, if it was a seven day stay, I would only do two. So in answer to the question. 
Uh, here we go, next one. Okay, this is from Matt Walker. Interesting question. Um, he says, looking back at your earlier, earlier videos, you didn't say so much. <laughs> Still great, but it was more capturing the footage. This time you pretty much spoke throughout the whole vlog. Is that a confidence thing? Certainly made for a better experience in my book. Really enjoyed them. Will you be heading back? Cheers. Um, yeah, actually, that's interesting. Well, I think when you look at my earlier vlogs, they were, I mean, I, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So um, it's all very amateur. I think it's a bit more sort of professional these days. And uh, I guess I've just sort of found my style with it, really. Um, yeah, and I, I think if I'm going, if I'm walking around town with Suzanne, I'm not going to talk into a camera 24-7. It's just not going to happen. So um, whilst I'll do a bit of a commentary on the actual slots, I probably wouldn't do so much of a commentary walking around town because I'm with someone. Um, if I'm solo, I'm happy to chat till the cows come home. Um, so that's probably one of the reasons. And secondly, yeah, I think it's just, I don't know, I'm sort of quite used to using the phone as a vlog and, you know, rabbiting on as, as I do. So yeah, I guess I've probably just found my niche, if, that's, if that makes sense. Okay, we're coming to the end now. Hooray, I hear you say. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so another person asking, oh, sorry, Nikki Firmage. Hi, Nikki. Um, asking uh, my thoughts on um, the the best loyalty programs. Well, as I said, I only use two. I use M Life and Be Connected, so I would recommend both of those. Um, obviously, Be Connected would only be if you're off strip. Um, Okay, and this is from uh, Johan Verhage. Hopefully, uh, Johan, I've, I've pronounced that correctly. Um, he's asked, um, I have a question you want to answer. Is there a safe way for pedestrians to walk from the Rio to Caesar's Palace, uh, or do you need to take the shuttle? Well, yes, you can. You can walk from Rio to um, Caesar's. It, um, I mean, it is, it is safe. Um, although I wouldn't personally, I wouldn't really do it at night uh, because you sort of you walk and then where the um, the uh, uh, motorway goes under, it sort of does a bend round, and you are pretty much out on your own out there. Although it is sort of enclosed, but yeah, I wouldn't be too confident at night during the day is absolutely no problem whatsoever. Um, as I said, they do do a shuttle there, which I think is free whether you're a hotel guest or not. Um, so probably in the day I'd walk it, and at night I'd get a shuttle or a cab back. In answer to your question, um, IDB1979 asks about what program I use to edit together the videos, and well, I've already answered that. And uh, Sam Havel asks uh, my attitude towards my bankroll and how it affects my betting strategy during um, the trip, i.e. <clears throat> Are you prepared to lose your entire bankroll each trip? Also curious to know what your colleagues and family think of your Vegas hobby. I find that some people tend to frown upon my trips. <laughs> well, my attitude to the bankroll is um, it's there to be spent. Um, but um, I am a very good gambler if I'm ahead in not giving it back. I'm not so good if I'm behind trying to chase um, the losses. Um, thankfully, this trip, uh, from the early stages, I was ahead um, from almost the beginning really um so i found it quite easy to stay ahead and not really um really push it too hard after that um yeah i mean it does it does it does it obviously i think i think this trip it would have affected whether i'd bet max or not throughout the trip i could do because i was doing okay if that makes sense um and i am yes as i said i am i am prepared to lose the entire bank well um yeah, what you, my colleagues and family think of my Vegas hobby is an interesting one. My parents used to say, you're not going there again. For years they kept saying that. And I said, I, I kept saying to them, well, I, I would be happy to holiday in Vegas for, for, for the rest of my life. Um, and they've, they've stopped asking now. They just know I enjoy it so much and that's it. And, what, you know, I'm sort of known as Mr. Vegas at work, as you can imagine. Um, and uh, I think now that even they've stopped uh, asking me where I'm going. In fact, if I if I go anywhere and they... Uh, they say, oh, you've been on holiday at Vegas again. And I say, no, they seem surprised. Um, yeah, some people can't understand it. It's true. Um, I don't really care about that. Um, ultimately, it makes me happy. And isn't that what it's all about, to be honest? 
Okay, this is Shannon Montgomery asks, um, what casino has the best stroke worst comp drink service in terms of selection and speed? Well, selection I can't really answer because I just drink beer, but um, uh, the casino with the best on the strip is Cosmo. <coughs> the casino with the best downtown is the Downtown Grand. Um, what casino offers the best uh, players reward program? Well, M Life and Be Connected. Um, what are my top five shows? Um, understanding that Absinthe is one. Now, that's an interesting one. Um, I love magic shows, so Penn and Teller I loved. Actually, I went to see um, David Copperfield a couple of years back, and to be honest, I thought, mentally, I thought he was sort of like a relic from the 80s, but he was absolutely bloody brilliant, so I'd certainly recommend him. Carrot Top is hilarious, if you've not seen him. Um, he is absolutely brilliant. He's on at Luxor, so I, I, he's a comedian, but a very unique comedian. Um, I thoroughly enjoy him. I did go through a stage of watching Cirque du Soleil shows, um, but I sort of ended up getting bored with that. Once you've seen a couple, they are pretty much all the same. Um, but if you are into Cirque, Cirque du Soleil, I do remember the one at Treasure Island being, being particularly good. And funnily enough, I didn't enjoy O at Bellagio as much as I did the, the TI one, although I think the budget was off the scale at Bellagio. But um, yeah, so that, those would be probably my favourite ones. Um, I do, to be honest, I'm more of a, uh, a sort of music concert type of person. Uh, so I will always search those out um, and try and catch a couple of those normally. Actually, this last trip I didn't see any, but uh, normally I would. Um, my favourite ones ever have been uh, include Blondie at uh, Hard Rock about 10 years ago. Um, Gene Pitney at the Stardust in uh, 2002. Uh, uh, Fisher Spooner at Mandalay Bay I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, oh, I've seen so many uh, great bands in Vegas over the years and... Uh, uh, music, music, music gigs are, are really what I like doing, both at home and when I'm uh, in Vegas as well. Okay, that's it. I think that's all questions answered. So uh, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this. I think it's going on a bit. Uh, we're close to an hour. Um, for those of you that have been waiting for the puppy footage, it follows this. So uh, yes, let me know whether or not you want me to do a vlog in London at any time uh, and. Uh, I will uh, consider doing one. Uh, but until next time, thanks ever so much for watching this last trip. I really did enjoy myself. And thanks for all your comments. I do read them all and I really do uh, appreciate them. Uh, so until next time, take care of yourselves. See you soon. Hey, Ollie. So we've had Ollie uh, for a week today. He's 11 weeks old now. Um, <laughs> and he is a little tinker. Uh, very, very sweet. Uh, the first night we had him, um, he, he did uh, struggle a bit with being away from his mum and siblings, uh, which I think is quite sort of standard for puppies, to be honest with you. Um, so he did wail a bit the first night. Um, and we've got a pen for him to sleep in. Uh, but since then, he's been absolutely superb. He slept through from night two onwards. Uh, his toilet training's actually been pretty good. Um, and actually, you've got to be very careful when you're actually walking these, which is why he's on the lead. Um, you can only walk uh, Basset puppies for very short periods as they're growing because their joints are susceptible to injury. So it's pretty much up and down the garden, and that's it. Um, but he's a, a fantastic member of the family and they're really good personalities, Bassets. I've always wanted one, always wanted a male Basset and I always wanted to call him Ollie. So here we are. And the cat doesn't mind him too much either. Well, they've not spent that much time together yet. In fact, uh, where well, I was just doing the video just then, um, is on the third floor of our house up there, my man cave. I have a cinema set up and things and a study and uh, the cat lives up there and Ollie lives downstairs <laughs> so they couldn't be further apart but I'm sure in time they will at least tolerate each other they don't hate each other already so it's it's all good really anyway so that's Ollie very pleased to have him take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon